Before I even introduce the video, I have to show you one of my favorite new features in Photoshop 2020 because it just, to me, it makes things so much easier. And that is the Zoom tool. So I've got a document open here that's got a bunch of little icons and arrows and text layers and all these different things in it. And if you wanted to zoom into something, you would have to go and grab the zoom tool and command or control plus. I could zoom in and out and then I could pan around and do that. But now with uh, with 2020, now what I can do is option or alt click on the layer that I want to zoom into. So I'm going to hold down my option alt key and then click on this arrow layer and it zooms into it. And then if I want to go zoom into something else, even something I can barely see like the text, then I just option or alt click on that type layer and it zooms into that, zooms into that one. I'll go option or alt click on the Lightroom icon and it zooms into that. It, it's, it's one of those little things and I, it was like a, a little sneaker feature. Like I didn't know it was coming and when I saw it, it actually has become one of my favorite things in the new 2020 version. Folks, my name is Matt Kluskowski. Welcome to my top features for photographers in Photoshop 2020. So there are other features inside of Photoshop. I'm only gonna cover the ones for that I think are for photographers. My buddy Jesus Ramirez has a channel on YouTube called the Photoshop Training Channel. And he's done a whole video that covers all the new features. So I would say go check out his uh, channel if you're interested in learning about all the new stuff, if maybe you're a designer or a graphic artist of some sort. All right, let's go back here and uh, let's dive into what I think is probably gonna become one of the, one of the biggest uh, new features here, and that is called the object selection tool. So it's going to be grouped in here with your quick selection tool and your magic wand. That was the, the only two tools that were inside of this group. It's called the object selection tool. I have to give you, I don't know what you want to call it, public service announcement. So when I installed Photoshop, it's actually the reason why I was a day late in doing this video. When I installed the latest version, this tool wasn't here for me. And I knew I was on the latest version because I had all the other features, but the tool wasn't here for me. And, and yesterday, whenever I would do a Google search on the object selection tool, all I came up with was brand new videos. But I, I did one today and I found under the edit menu, if you go down here to toolbar, I had to go down here and restore the default. I had made changes to my toolbars, although I didn't change that toolbar, that section of the toolbar, for some reason, it was hidden for me. So I'd, I'd remove other tools that I just simply, you know, ruler, note, count tool, things like that. I just go in and remove them. That's why I modify my toolbar. But if you're not seeing it, I don't know. Again, if you've messed with the toolbar, maybe there's a little bug with it. Okay, so the object selection tool, the way it works, and I'm going to pick a bad photo to start with because it's, everybody always says, you know, oh, the, they're just using it on photos with simple backgrounds. But folks, if you are selecting things from their backgrounds, um, the your, your success rate is gonna be tremendously higher if it has a clean background. And a lot of people that do this type of work as a living, they plan this stuff. But here's a, a pretty messy background, and I'll show you, it's not gonna do a perfect job uh, and by any means, but it does a pretty decent job considering how busy this background is, considering that there's all this water in the background and whatnot there. So that's, you know, I think in a way that's worst case scenario. If I saw this this photo, I would never actually try to select this from the background because I would I would know I would be unsuccessful. I wouldn't be able to successfully do it in a way that it would look good. But if we go and we kind of go in a little more simpler fashion here, the idea behind this tool is, is you simply just click and drag, all right? Now, we've had other tools in here, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. The problem with some of the automatic selection tools is that like select subject is you don't get to choose what the subject is. So if you've got multiple things in the photo, it would automatically figure out or try to figure out what the subject is. But at least with this, you get a choice. And if you see that it's not doing a great job on part of it, what you can do is modify it with the option or the alt key, all right? So I can hold down like, uh, for example here, I need to add to the selection. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click and drag. Oh not add to the selection, take away from the selection, hold down the option or alt key, click and drag, and then you'll see it'll pick up that area. If I needed to add to the selection, then I hold down the shift key, and you'll always see a little plus or minus icon associated with your cursor, so you'll know 
it might be really small, but you'll know an idea of what you're trying to do. And you know, these are just shortcuts to some of the options that you have up here. You can also switch this back over to the lasso tool and jump in there and hold down your option or alt key and use the lasso if you needed to get a little bit more specific and it's not fitting into a perfect square, but you want to lasso something. Okay. And then once you do that, you'd obviously do something to it. Like we can press command or control J and we can pop that up onto its own layer. At that point, we can do things like image adjustments. I can do hue and saturation where I can boost the saturation. It'll just make it crazy red. I can change the color if I wanted to. So if I wanted to go with a little bit more of a RNG color, maybe pull the saturation back, maybe not so RNG. Something along the, anyway, you get the idea. We can even change the lightness and the darkness of it there. We can make changes to those things. All right, so that is your object selection tool. That is going to lead me into some enhancements with select subject. So what, what I, select subject has, has been, been done before. It's been a, a feature that's been out here for quite some time. Essentially, you would just choose any one of your selection tools in this group here, whether you're on the quick selection or the object selection, anything in that group. And you're going to see this little select subject, uh, little button up here in the top. And by the way, if you're not choosing one of those tools, you can go to your properties panel, just go to window, go down here to properties and you can say I've got mine over here. You can go to properties panel and select subject will be associated with that layer as well. There's actually a whole lot of properties and this is something to poke around in. Photoshop 2020 has added a bunch of properties and things that we can change about photos uh, right inside of here. So some other new features that you might want to check out. Not really super photography related, except maybe the alignment things if you're building a multi-layered document. But select subject simply selects the subject. You don't really get any choices with it. As you can see here, um, zoom in a little bit. And just to show you, it, it does a pretty good job. If you wanted to, I'll deselect. We'll try it. We'll see how object selection tool works on this one. Oh, I got lasso Ooh. mode. I got lasso mode selected. Let's go back to rectangle. In fact, let's use lasso mode. How's that? So we'll just lasso our subject just to show you how the object selection tool works for that. And now if it doesn't get everything, uh, again, we would just go in here and notice it's missed a little bit of an area inside of here. Uh, so I can just hold down my modifier keys, my option or alt keys. And actually this would be a great time to use the lasso because that is not a uh, that's not a boxy area. That's actually an area I would want to be a little bit more conform to. And before, when I did this, when I was testing, I used the box and it took me two or three times to get to that. So that actually the lasso makes it easier. So the select subject tool has been improved. As you can see, it does select the subject. But what I did is, is rather than that, rather than try to explain all the improvements, because it's really hard to visualize. I went in and I did I did a, a test. I did select subject in the 2019 version of Photoshop because I still have a computer with it, all right? And this is the result that I got. So if we zoom in here, we take a look at some of the edges. That's the result I got out of the box without any modifications. So then what I did is I did it with 2020, and that's what we got. So there's 2019, there's 2020. So you could see it's a lot less fringy. Uh, the edges look a lot better. Select subject is not meant to be a one-click fix. Select subject is meant to get you close, and then you're going to use your modifying tools. Mostly, uh, when it comes to your selection tools, you're going to use your select and mask dialog box to go in there and refine it or mask. So it's never meant to get you perfectly there, but it will get you close. And then again here, uh, let's turn on. So I did a, a coffee cup here. Again, just a, had a really clean edge to it. You can see the original photo right there. So it's got a really clean edge to it. That's what select subject in 2019 did. And then that's 2020. Let me zoom in because I know video, I know it's a little harder to see these things. So there's 2019, there's 2020. 19, 20. So you can get an idea select subject has indeed been improved. Okay, moving on down the line. This, this again, I, I'm, going, I'm going with, this is one of my, this is one of the features that I didn't expect that has become, become very hard for me to give up now. So if you recall, we, uh, we had made some changes to this leaf here. In fact, I'm going to be a little bit more obvious about it. I'm going to go to image adjustments, brightness, and contrast. 
Let's go over here. Let's make it brighter. Let's make it a lot brighter. All right. So making that whole leaf brighter. Now, the one that's under it is a little bit of a different color and darker. So let's say I wanted to mask. So I would add a layer mask to this layer. I take my brush tool and I would normally just start brushing with black. So we go over here, brush, 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 brush. You get the idea. Well, before we would have to switch between black and white, but now they've made it, <laughs> they've changed the brush tool so that if you're selected on the brush tool, you can hold the tilde key, all right? It's the key to the left of the one. You can hold that key down and it switches you to eraser mode. If you look at my mask, watch here, let me undo that. If you look at my mask, see it's all black. And if I just start painting, it's essentially erasing black, which is pretty much painting with white, right? It's the same as me switching over to white. It's just a little bit easier for, I guess maybe the educator in me knows that teaching people this will be a little bit simpler as well. So it's not necessarily for somebody just getting into masking, we can get moving pretty quick because I can say paint with black and then just erase it from the areas where you don't want. We don't have to you know, dive too much further into masking. So it just makes it a little bit simpler. Again, I'm painting, painting. I don't have to do anything, but just press that key. And now it puts me in, I'm erasing from that mask, which is essentially painting with black because, or painting with white because you were painting with black. And when you erase it, it just goes back to white. All right, moving on from there. So content aware fill, content aware fill has gotten a really nice upgrade. So, and I'll explain it as I'm going to go to my lasso tool here. And this is, this is how I would use the content aware fill dialog box is I would go in here and I would lasso everything that I wanted to remove. So here's a shadow of somebody holding a flash. They were, we were lighting him. So somebody's holding a flash up here. So I would go select that, come up here to content at where fill. And the, the biggest thing I didn't like about this dialog box, cause it, it's, it's good in so many ways was the fact that the green area shows where Photoshop shows what Photoshop is considering as a sample area, but it would be, it would be such a big area and I have to go in and erase. So it's got three buttons now, auto rectangular and custom. So auto, I mean, look at it. It's gone through and it's actually done a selection of the foreground. Somehow it got his face in there. If you look at his face, the tones between his face and the ground, it, it makes sense in a way. Um, but we can go in here and just use our plus or minus tools here to add or subtract from the selection. So I can subtract that and I can even subtract that from the selection. So and you'll see it does a really nice job. We've got rectangular, which is going to be similar, pretty close to what we had before, which is, as you can see here, this is usually what I was left with. So then I would have to go in and erase and erase and erase the whole thing. So that was kind of a pain in the butt. And then we've got custom, where we can just use the brush to go in and we just paint from the default. So it's essentially starting with nothing, which can also be really useful too. If you just know, hey, I'm not gonna be able to get there with any auto selection tools. Just start with nothing and that way you don't have to erase a whole bunch of area. All righty, uh, type layers, I'm gonna mention it because I know photographers do, add, do use type in some way, whether you're making a poster or a photo. And all you gotta just really know is that type layers uh, with their properties have been greatly enhanced. So if you come up here to the window menu when you have a type layer selected, and you go down to properties, you're gonna see the character and the paragraph and type options all thrown into one place. Previously, you would have to go to window and you'd have to go to character, character styles, and you have to go down here to paragraph. Paragraph. You had all those different panels to go in there and do things to type with. Now it's all been condensed into one properties panel, which makes it really nice because now you can do just about anything you want to your text just using that panel right there. All right, and our last feature, last but not least, it's actually, a, a, it's a tiny little feature, but it, I think a lot of you are gonna kind of jump on this one. So let's say I'm working on a document and obviously folks, you know, especially with, you know, as photographers, the, the, the large raw files that we're working with today, like this is taken with a Sony a7R three. So it's a 40 some megapixel file, especially when you start adding layers to it, these documents grow these things take long for Photoshop to render. And if you've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 images open, as I do here, it, it, things start to slow down, all right? So 
it's worth closing documents that you're not using. Well, now what you can do is if you've got a document open, you can come up here and just do file and you can choose close others and it'll go through and it'll close all of the other documents and it'll just leave open the document that you're working on. Again, big, big raw megapixel files. Things will slow down. I would suggest you keep this as tidy as possible because it will speed up Photoshop and the, the rate at which you're able to do things inside of Photoshop. Folks, hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, stop by, leave me a comment below. I'm interested to see what your favorite new feature is. And please feel free to swing by mattk.com uh, as well as subscribe here on the channel if you want to uh, find out about new videos that I have coming out.